Because there's no guarantee if you're an investor that your decline, your initial decline will last a month or two months and three months. Keep this in mind. I've traded several bear markets that lasted for three years. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is well. It is 8 o'clock in the morning, actually almost a little closer to 8.30. It is Sunday morning and I am doing this update crazy early because again, well, if you've been following these updates, you know how crazy my kid's schedule is. With basketball, I got two different basketball tournaments today in two different towns, so this is literally the only time I have a chance to uh, kind of share my thoughts. So let's talk about the market. So there's, there's an old saying, and it says, uh, April showers uh, brings May flowers. I think everybody's heard that before, and if you apply that into, um, into uh, what happened in the month of April, it's pretty significant, right? Um, 2008, if you guys remember, that was the knee deep crosshairs of the financial crisis. We didn't know if our financial system was going to survive. You had uh, companies going to zero, you know, Bear Stearns, the, I mean, talking about pillars of Wall Street for years and years, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, so and so, so forth and so on. And that was the worst month of April in historical history, right? In historical history, that doesn't even make sense too early in the morning. And what we saw, what we saw for uh, 2022 April, was the worst April ever, basically since since 2008. And that shows you the historical significance of selling. Uh, we were basically in a historical mess, uh, almost an Armageddon of our whole financial universe, right? And here we are. You know, here we are uh, years later, 14 years later, and we trumped that. So just to give you kind of historical significance, how bad uh, price action was uh, on the NASDAQ for investors. Uh, but here is kind of, you know, here is kind of the more important part of uh, where we are now is where all the warning signals were uh, just three weeks ago. Again, if you've been watching these videos, um, even for the last three weeks, you saw how significant that 50 day moving average was. And as soon as we closed below the 50 day moving average, it started a pretty aggressive waterfall effect. And, and a lot of people, you know, that there's an old age dis discussion, fundamental analysis versus technical analysis. And I get it. If a company's great, a company's great, right? Like, uh, like uh, Jeff Bezos always said, even during, um, even during the dot com crash, when the stock was just, you know, just imploding like everything else, he knew that his business model was strong because he saw the metrics, right? He saw the metrics and how the business was growing. And ultimately, uh, the metrics of the individual company kind of uh, caught up to a rebound in the equities market. Uh, we'll get to Amazon, obviously, in, in a second as well. But the most important part is that discussion, fundamental analysis versus technical analysis, in my opinion is it's very, very important, obviously, to um, invest in great companies. If you are an investor, I'm a, I'm a trader. Um, I trade both sides of the market. I, I look at data, I look at s sentiment. That's the most important thing for me. Um, but if you are a longer term uh, trader, excuse me, an investor in the market, uh, I believe investing in great companies is phenomenal. You know, your Microsofts, your Apples, your Googles of the world, uh, your Amazons of the world, but there is a very, very important area called technical analysis that gives you a guide how to enter these trades safely. And and remember, you know, we've been this is just a four month decline. That's all it is, right? Four month decline, and in between, we had a really gr aggressive three week rally. And again, the significance, right? The common denominator, the fifty day moving average. Once it reclaimed, it continued. Once it lost, it started to implode again. But I, I do believe that if you are an investor, um, no matter how great a company is, for your stock to go higher, right? It's like somebody turning around and telling me, hey, I think Tesla goes to 1500, right? 1500, I believe, and I love Tesla. Tesla's been a phenomenal trader. And somebody turns around to me and says, hey, Dan, I believe in the next five years, 
Tesla is going to be at $1,500, right? And I said, that's great. I, I believe in Tesla. I love Tesla. I think Tesla is a cold stock. But my biggest problem is, and my biggest counter kind of a conversation to, and I'm just using Tesla as an example, is, well, this has only been four months of, of, of a decline, right? And now we're not talking about the war uh, in the Ukraine. It's out there, but we're not talking about it, right? It was a big significant, a big catalyst of a lot of declines that we've seen. Um, we're not talking about COVID anymore, realistically, right? We see the numbers and you're kind of glancing it from, from a distance, but nobody's really paying attention to COVID and the Ukraine like we did when they were really in the crosshairs, right? Right, right when they were right in front of us every single second of the day, because Wall Street and Main Street, we learned to live with it, okay? So when you get to technical analysis, it is a guide, right? And there was weakness before Ukraine, and now there's weakness after Ukraine. And now if your argument is Tesla will be at $1,500 one day, shouldn't it at least reclaim back the 50 day moving average, right? Think about that. Cause there's no guarantee if you're an investor that your decline, your initial decline will last a month or two months and three months. Keep this in mind. I've traded several bear markets that lasted for three years, right? For three years. This isn't, you know, this isn't, if you're having, a, you know, if you're having mental issues after month three, after month four, think about what a lot of people, a lot of us went through in, you know, for three, two, three years of nonstop selling, right? And you're gonna have, and again, like we, we spoke about in every single video, you're gonna have pockets of strength, okay? That's always the case. But if you're, if, if you're an investor, shouldn't you at least wait till your stock gets above the 50 day moving average? So for example, Tesla got rejected at 9, 9.35 on Friday, right? That's the 50 day moving average. And you can see here what the significance of the 50 day moving average when it reclaimed the 50 day moving average and went on a really, really big run. So Friday, it got rejected off the 50 day moving average. And again, there is no guarantee that Tesla will reclaim the 50 day moving average again anytime near term. I'm just, again, I'm just using Tesla as an example. So my point is if you are a fundamental trader, shouldn't you at least wait till the technicals are giving you a go. It's still the same company, right? So if you believe Tesla is going to be at 1500 one day, shouldn't it get above the 50 day moving average first, right? It only makes sense because there's no guarantee. And if this market continues to pull, and again, we'll get to the significance of where we are right now, you could, you know, you could see Tesla. And again, I'm just using Tesla as an example. I know somebody's out there, shut up, Dan, it's going to 2000. Okay, relax, right? You know, why? Everything's getting pulled, right? Why does Tesla have to be above the 50 day tomorrow? Why, why can't it be a year from now? But a year from now, why can't the stock go to 400? It's just, it's just, these are just honest conversations that every single investor and trader always have, to, uh, always have to have with themselves, okay? There's no guarantee your stock when you want to, your stock when you need to, is going to reclaim macro levels. And for a stock to go higher, and it doesn't make a difference what stock you're talking about, for it to get to where you think it's going to go, it has to reclaim uh, technical level. So yes, do I believe fundamental analysis investing in great companies is phenomenal? Absolutely. Okay. But I do believe, and I believe strongly that for them to go where you need them to go or want them to go or need them to go, or want them to go or need them to go, or want them to go, they have to, there's no debate. They have to reclaim back daily supply and if they don't they continue to go lower don't believe me well again let's look at the cues and this is exactly what we're talking about so here's the last four months we've been talking about this non-stop we've been sell bias non-stop we've been talking about the aggressive nature of even the worst markets will always have sequences uh or multiple sequences of days that there is representing strength but the common denominator is still the same we're below, right? We're below the 50 day moving average. We've been below the 50 day moving average. And, and this week, when you look at some of the really stagnant losses, I mean, really, really eye popping losses in the names that, you know, are, are bull market darlings, right? Cult stocks, your Amazons in the world, right? They miss their earnings, the Googles of the world, right? They miss their earnings. Uh, Microsoft had a pretty good quarter, right? Pretty good quarter. And everything was great, but guess what? Friday's candle took out the whole quarter. And you could turn around, you know, Apple, you know, nothing great, right? Apple, nothing great as well. And you could turn around and say, well, Facebook did great, right? Facebook had a great quarter. There was absolute, guys, 
When I'm telling you, there was absolutely, the bar for Tesla was, I mean, the bar for Facebook was so low. Look where Facebook was, right? Look where Facebook was. This is just going back to, you know, going back to what, July, right? July of 2021, the stock is cut in half. So the bar for earnings have been very, very low. Even, even Netflix, they had the worst, the, the lowest bar of all right the lowest bar of all like everybody knew they were going to have a, a, a bad quarter and they they still couldn't uh you know outperform so you know listen there's there's obviously nothing has changed right nothing materialistically has changed uh if you go back to uh the first time we lost the 50-day moving average uh you'll notice the same thing right big declines short squeeze into supply rejection big declines short squeeze into supply new lows big declines finally reclaimed the 50-day moving average got rejected at supply again lost the 50-day moving average and how and here we are right here we are and this is the lowest close the absolute lowest close in, in this whole formation and again it, it, a lot of i get it a lot of people are, are new to trading or new to the market they're very emotional right now there, there's nothing you can do right the, the, the faster you uh, get your emotional levels uh, under control, the faster you start looking at the market from kind of where it is versus where you want it to be, the faster you'll start, you know, kind of let go emotionally and letting everything kind of play out organically. And, and it sucks if you're a long bias trader. It really does. Okay. And you feel helpless and it's, it feels like the end of the world and all. But again, this, this, this is nothing new. If you've been trading, even if you've been trading, forget about going back to you know, for 9-11, right? Even if you've been trading since 2007, 2009, you, you know what I'm saying, right? You, there, there Again, there is no guarantees that this market will wake up at any given time. So you have to trade on both sides of the market. Again, I, I, I'm a bull by nature, okay? But I'm a realist at heart, okay? And as much as I love a bull market and I loved and enjoyed this mood, I have no problem with this move down as well. We've seen some phenomenal opportunities uh we've seen stocks blow up on earnings and you know two three days later they confirm their earnings lows and they go lower and, and this is kind of how i want to segue uh into this up and coming week so look at netflix i just want to give you an example of what, I, what i'm talking about and this is kind of like my focus uh this week so one of the most one of the better plays for for generation to generation to generation of traders has been that stock that misses earnings and you know it blows up and we're just using netflix as an example and it, it kind of rallies for a couple of days or maybe even goes sideways for a couple of days and a lot of the new traders will turn around and be like that's bullish all the bad news is out right it's about to squeeze back they're not buying time for the bulls they're buying time for the bears the longer a stock stick goes sideways goes sideways or up a little bit okay after an earnings blow up there's a high probability eventually in the next you know few days it's going to lose its earnings low and start its next leg down. And that's exactly what happened with Netflix, right? It put in its earnings low of two, uh, 212. Once it lost that 212 on the close, went all the way down to 185. Again, the bulls weren't buying time. The bears were, you know, were, were buying time. They were slow playing the bulls. So this is not a bullish setup. This is a bearish setup. Again, a company that loses their, its earnings eventually will start losing its earnings low and starting this next leg up uh isrg turned out to be a pretty good trade for us um you know i was in this thing for four days or so again here's a perfect example of a stock blowing up on earnings right it lost its earnings lows and it went from you know 251 all the way down to 235 again there's a next leg down starting but again it's the same thing over and over again bulls we're, we're, we're sitting there and saying, well, I'd say the bad news is out. The bad news is not out. They're just resting, right? The bears are slow playing you. They're resting. That's exactly uh, what's happening. So when you look at the next round of possible uh, contenders, right, going into this week, you got Amazon, right? Maybe there'll be a dead cat bounce on Amazon. At the end of the day, it's still Amazon. But once Amazon, you know, once Amazon starts losing its earnings low in the next, you know, three, four days, this is going to start the next leg down. Look at Google, same thing. I, these are stocks I'm watching, right? Here is the earnings low. I'm actually watching this thing. You know, you see these two, two lows, back-to-back -back days? I'm not even waiting for the earnings low. If this thing starts building below this bottom channel on Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to start shorting Google below the earnings low. But once it closes below the earnings lows, it's going to start its next leg down. Look at TDOC. 
right? You could take the whole Kathy Wood thing out of it. Again, it doesn't really make, make a difference to me who's long, who's not long, whatever the case may be. It's the same thing. The stock blow up, right? You know, put in a low, it had a little dead cat bounce, right? Kathy came on CNBC, compared it to the next Amazon. Okay, whatever. Uh, more important is once it starts putting in its earnings low, right? It's going to start its next like that. This thing should be trading in the 20s in the next several weeks. And also a name like, you know, new contenders, right? You could go through the whole list. Uh, look at names, for example, like Team, right? Look at Team, right? Team is ready to go, right? Look at Team. Look at a name uh, like Verisign, right? Look at a name like Verisign. Verisign just blew up on earnings. What do you think? This is, this is, this is a bullish pattern? You know, the bad news is out of the stock. It's ready to go. We're below the 50-day the moving average on the Qs. The longest we stay below the 50-day moving average, shoot, none of these stocks are buying time to go up. They're buying time to go lower. So that's kind of the sequence that I'm kind of watching uh, going into this week. Again, from the technical point of view, look, this is the lowest close in this whole formation. There's nothing bullish about it. At any time, can the market rally? And we see this, right? We, we see this uh, every single week. You know, markets do rally. Again, the worst markets uh, that I've ever traded always have dead cat balances. It's not a question of one or two days of rallying, it's the whole big picture. And if you look at the weekly view, right? If you look at the week, this is the weekly view. This is after a massive, massive rally. Look where we are visually. Is this bullish to you, right? Again, this is this is not a question that I can answer for you. If you're looking at, at the market a little bit differently from the reality of the market, right? That's that's on you. But that's the that's that's the whole point of being you know being a trader versus uh, being an investor. But if you saw this chart pattern, right? If if well, we are seeing this chart pattern. Okay, there's. You know, you could say whatever you want to somebody else. Your opinion, again, price action is price action. My opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. The scoreboard is a scoreboard. And this is where the scoreboard is starting uh, going into the new week. So obviously, guys, look at it. We're, we're, in a, we're in a sell bias environment. We have been for uh, a very, very long time. Uh, it's super important. Uh, if you're an investor, again, you know, maybe start to learn how to trade. Maybe start to learn how to how to utilize the downside of the market. There's there's some good opportunities, okay? Or at least what we've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks. That first close below the 50, you should have been hedging your portfolio. There's a there's a video I made three weeks ago. To say, hey, this is what's going to happen if we close below the 50-day moving average. This is something. This is not something we just woke up Sunday morning and said, hey, by the way, I can't believe it. Who could have seen this coming? This is. That's why technical analysis versus uh, fundamental analysis is, you know, apples to hand grenades. Yeah, they're both important, but if you don't use technical analysis to support your fundamental view, you're always going to be upside down. So, guys, I want to wish everybody a wonderful uh, Sunday. I want you to stay blessed. I want you to stay healthy. And the most important thing is I want you to stay happy. Guys, God bless. Have an amazing Sunday. Have a great trading week. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.